All through his ministry, Jesus proclaimed the kingdom, which did not transfer from the earthly hope the Old Testament Jews were promised to a flying away to heaven for Christians. It was the same kingdom promised the Jews that the Christians will also see. All through the book of Acts, the disciples preached the death and resurrection as good news. Embrace it all. Fifth similarity. They both seem to oftentimes think that if in their religious institution or organization or tradition there is some sound truth, that that somehow means men who taught them these truths must have everything right, all or nothing. When I was a Jehovah's Witness, I thought they knew basic fundamental truths about the soul's ability to die, the wicked actually perishing as opposed to being preserved alive forever, Jesus' Father being the only true God, etc., and that, since they seem to basically be some of the only ones who actually embrace these, that these men must have special knowledge of some sort. That's where deception kicked in, and I started believing what they said about other things that weren't true, because they knew so many basic truths that the world seemed not to understand. Of course, I was persuaded to accept other things through propaganda and repetition in the literature that I thought I needed to understand God's word. I get the feeling that Orthodox Christians, when they listen to compelling sermons from people like Paul Washer and the like, in which there is much truth, that they are compelled emotionally and even intellectually to believe everything people like Paul Washer say, because Paul Washer preaches a lot of truth. Unfortunately, a little leaven can ferment the whole lump, and there is leaven in both the Watchtower organization and in Orthodox Christianity that remains unrecognized by those who profess to be of these faiths, because listening to sometimes charismatic or even humble, meek teachers and preachers can be a deceiving, if even if only partially deceiving, business. The whole world is lying in Satan's power and is under his deception. Not just the Watchtower organization. Examine all things. Sixth similarity. They have both let men who have gathered together in ecumenical councils or in closed secretive quarters in a publishing building in New York City determine their statements of faith instead of again listening to what the Lord and his God who made that one our Lord actually say in succinct and irrefutable uh, biblical statements that should be our faith statements. For example, a Jehovah's Witness should be able to say and believe what Jesus taught in his unqualified declarations like those found in John 6. Accordingly, Jesus said to them, Most truly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in yourselves. He that feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has everlasting life, and I shall resurrect him at the last day. Jesus gave no hint that he was only talking to a few privileged ones in the Watchtower Society as opposed to every qu qu uh, Christian who would read his powerful words. 1 Timothy 2.5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, a man, Christ Jesus. No reason men should be able to qualify and nullify this for Jehovah's Witnesses. Also, no reason Trinitarians should believe the mediator existed in the same being as the one God of Deuteronomy 6.4, who he is distinguished from in this text again. Now, the Nicene Creed confesses that Christ is true God from true God in direct violation of John 17.3, where he says his Father is only, the, the one only, uh, truly God. I will often hear certain Trinitarians use early church fathers' writings as evidence for what is true, even though the ones they cite in general were philosophically and platonically schooled and certainly didn't believe exactly the same as modern-day Trinitarians. Even the Nicene Creed is ambiguous in its declaration of what the Holy Spirit might be. God warned us of men's traditions and philosophies. Apostasy was already present in the first century. Would it be far-fetched to say those from a Greek culture might naturally impose their Hellenistic thought onto the Hebrew text with time? Tradition is powerful. Tradition can blind. It, all, it doesn't always cater to the facts. What I would recommend would be to take succinct, explicit texts that tell us who God and Christ are, like John 17, 3, 1 Corinthians 8, 5, and 6, 1 Timothy 2, 5, John 20, 17, Ephesians 1, 3, etc., instead of building an elaborate system of inference to proclaim something that is never explicitly declared anywhere in all of Scripture. I would also recommend not using terminology like substance and triune to define God when Scripture doesn't, if you're sola, scri sola scriptura. 
Again, cite the texts that explain who God and Christ are as your creed. Why aren't they good enough? I saw one video on YouTube called The Jesus Creed, where many texts were given that were about Jesus, with positively none defining a triune God, because there aren't any. Going into this thought a little more, the seventh similarity is that they both have doctrines based on elaborate theological systems of interpretation and inference that cannot be gathered from any explicit statement in scripture, but rather only from preconceived impositions upon many texts they use together to invent a concept they think is sound, in spite of it not being succinctly taught in scripture, oft times using unbiblical language to define their doctrines that are foreign to scripture, except through this system of severe and unwarranted inference. To articulate what I'm talking about here, listen to Patrick Navas, author of Divine Truth or Human Tradition, a reconsideration of the Roman Catholic Protestant doctrine of the Trinity in light of the Hebrew and Christian scriptures. It's a long title. On a radio debate, six screens of the watchtower set up between him and Brian Garcia, also known as New Age Gamer, on YouTube. The link is below is that, um, as I was saying, I did associate with the witnesses to some extent, but never joined the organization. And one of the major reasons that, that prevented me from, from committing myself to, to, to the, that community, even though I felt there was a lot of good there, um, I, I, I never became persuaded that what they teach about you know, the doctrine of 1914, which is a very complicated interpretational formula, is arrived at in a very similar way that Trinitarians basically um, approach the subject of the Trinity. And the, the point that I'm making is that, in a similar sense, what the witnesses are basically saying is, you have to believe that Jesus has in, been invisibly present since the year 1914, which they arrive at through this extremely complicated interpretive formula, and they connect a wide variety of verses and statements interpreted in a certain way that all gives, in their minds, credence to this belief. And it's something that they consider essential, and that in fact you can believe, you know, all the things that the Bible says, but if you don't agree with them on this particular formula relating to chronology, in their minds, you can't really be accepted as a true Christian. That's right. And, and that's, and you're that is in other words, you're disqualified from true Christian status in their right. thinking. And so the point that I'm making is in a very similar way, the Trinitarians are basically saying, look, you cannot be accepted as a true Christian. Yeah. You're disqualified for not accepting something that isn't ever discussed or even mentioned in the scripture, but is a doctrinal formula that is basically um, it's something that is arrived at through a, a very complex process of inference and interpretation. It's not something that's straightforward in the scripture. If it was, then people who believe the scriptures would never, there would be no reason to question it. And that's why I don't question doctrines like Jesus is the Messiah or that God raised him for the dead or that God is love, simply because those teachings are directly and clearly articulated, whereas the doctrine of the Trinity is just simply not in that category of things that the Scripture deliberately presents to us. And so in a similar way, I, I, I don't accept the, the Trinitarian conclusion, neither do I accept the 1914 doctrine of the Witnesses. To me, that's always what I've seen in my studies, that the, the, the practice of, of basically saying you must accept a doctrinal formula in order to be saved, um, it's just a real dif difficult, in my opinion, immodest thing to do when, when the scripture already tells us explicitly what we have to believe to, to come to, 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 to a, a, true, a, a good relationship with God.